Hi everyone, my name is Jason Klein. I'm the director of P20 initiatives at Northern Illinois University. This is one of the presentations in our virtual spring P20 network meeting while we all shelter in place. We're excited to bring you a limited list of the presentations that were part of our original agenda for a face-to-face -face meeting, most of which, though not all, are going to focus on college and career readiness. So today for this presentation, we're excited to have with you Gina and Melissa. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Melissa Byrne. I'm the Director of College and Career Readiness for St. Charles School District 303. And this is my 14th year in the district. And part of my role as Director of College and Career Readiness is I oversee all of our work-based learning initiatives, along with career and technical education, early college initiatives, Project Lead the Way, um, our counselors, as well as other innovative learning initiatives. Good morning, I'm Gina Schuyler. I am with District 127 Grays Lake, serving Grays Lake Central and Grays Lake North. I am the CTE Department Chair and also oversees uh, careers and community partnerships for the district. Previously to that, I was the EFE for Lake County, serving as an Assistant Principal in Workforce Development for the local Career Center. I'm also a 17-year veteran CTE teacher. Today, Melissa and I are going to be talking to you about two perspectives in community partnerships. The two perspectives uh, have to do with both building and maintaining the partnerships um, as you start off those endeavors. Know that building partnerships is putting the parts together. There's no magic pill to do that, but today we hope you come away with uh, today's um, presentation with a couple different ideas of how to get started or how to make those connections. Maintaining is taking what you've existed have and, and making sure that that has the ability to grow. So you'll see when we present some of this, we're taking some of the same uh, different activities, but we're using them in different ways. I'm gonna focus on what we're doing in Lake County and Grays Lake. Um, specifically, we're, I have them um, put in two different categories, the building community partnerships and maintaining. And you'll see there's certain ones like the Lake County ecosystem or the career guide um, or the use of social media and advisory groups that are listed under both. And as I go through different examples of these, I'll show how I use them to both build and maintain my, my different partnerships. The first I'd like to talk about is on the next slide, which is our Lake County ecosystem. The Lake County ecosystem um, is such a valuable um, piece of, of building and maintaining community partnerships to me. The workforce system together, it comes together with uh, the collaboration of the Lake County Workforce, Lake County Partners, the Tech Campus, which is our career center, all of the high schools, and then there's other entities um, in the different service areas such as manufacturing. In that area, we offer to all of our business and our community partners that if you have an ask for one of those entities, know that you're getting the services for all of those entities. So know that if a company comes to me and indicates that they have a different pipeline need, I will let them know about the services that Lake County Workforce provides as far as upskilling uh, their current employees to make room for our interns or job shadows to, to come in. Another exciting opportunity we did is, is to be able to share our story. So the Lake County Career Guide was an outstanding way for us to be able to, to share our stories in Lake County. I found uh, in my many years of, of teaching CTE and being a CTE leader, we did not do a good job of, of telling our story. Um, we were lacking in that area and a, we had a lot of great things happening, but nobody knew about them. Um, so this was an area that I worked on together uh, with the Lake County Workforce. Uh, where I wanted a guide to be given out to all of our community partners as well as to our eighth population to have a better understanding of, of what the different career pathways were. But in there, it was also a way to celebrate success stories of the different partnerships. On the next slide, you'll see an example of one of those partnerships. In here, there's a company that we work with often, uh, which is Laser Precision. Um, Laser Precision on this particular posting, um, we're celebrating a CTE signing day and we're highlighting the internship uh, that took place. So again, you're both building and maintaining those different relationships by being able to, to tell your story. 
Now, while this is a bigger presentation um, as far as a publication, think about ways you could be doing this on a smaller scale. Maybe this is a newsletter um, out to your stakeholders um, or just highlighting through email or social media some of the cool things that, that are happening and the partnerships that are occurring within your district. Speaking of social media, um, I believe LinkedIn is an uh, untapped in resource uh, when it comes to building and maintaining community partnerships. Um, these are two examples of, of recent uh, LinkedIn and social media posts that, that I have used. Um, I use LinkedIn all the time. Uh, whenever the Cranes uh, top women in manufacturing come out, I use that to kind of scroll through and I um, request friends of, of different um, women that are highlighted in there to be able to connect with our uh, STEM for Girls initiatives in Lake County. So LinkedIn is, is an outstanding resource because it's such a business focused sector. Um, so one ask on the one side is our mock interviews that we hold in our district. Um, so we put our sign up on our LinkedIn or our social media for our different companies to be able to sign up. Um, I typically get anywhere from three to five new companies by doing this because there's that shared ability. Um, recently with our stay at home order, um, we have the ability to reach out to some different companies um, to be able to continue to serve e-learning, which I'll highlight shortly. Um, on the right-hand side, we talked about how we have a computer science program. Um, and I was just letting different companies know that, that we have this, but in doing so, it actually led to the opportunity to um, investigate career pathway and personal. On the next slide, you'll see that um, we've highlighted some different ways about how we can tell our story. So the previous slide was the ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Um, I think that's the one thing when we're in education, we were not uh, trained salespeople, but in some ways we, we need to be salespeople in order to be able to ask a company um, for assistance or a do donation or to come into our classrooms in, in some way. Um, worst case scenario when you ask is you're going to be right back at the spot that you started, which is not a bad thing. Um, so ask and, and you'd be surprised at, at what you can get in return. Um, companies are very much wanting to create pipelines. They're understanding the need to uh, involve themselves with CTE, but know by the time a company reaches out to you, they've exhausted a lot of different other opportunities. So you also need to be very mindful in your reaction time. Um, companies like very quick turnaround reaction time. Um, and that's something to be mindful of when, when we are reaching out to companies is be respectful of that. Um, we're teaching them how to build a pipeline and then that ecosystem is teaching them how to maintain or grow their existing pipeline. Uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see that we're, we're telling our story that our students are interviewing via Skype. We're getting them ready for real world skills, for communication, um, and, and getting them ready through some RIV software as well. On the right-hand side, that's a follow-up from, from our previous slide, where we had posted on social media that we had a computer science program. And that's when John Furr reached out to me and said, did you know because of this, you could be eligible for the pathway endorsement? And through there, um, I had several different contacts and now our district is one of the districts in Lake County that has the ability to um, offer that career pathway endorsement to our students. The next item I'd like to highlight is advisory groups. Advisory groups are so key. Um, you want to involve advisory groups, which are different business and industry sectors, in, in your planning. The more you involve them in your planning, it makes that path um, a little bit easier later on. On the left-hand side, this is an example of the Perkins stakeholder meeting. I don't think I would have been able to gather as many people for Lake County with the Perkins stakeholder meeting had I not been active in the community prior to that. So we had a very short turnaround time in order to uh, put together our Perkins stakeholder meeting. Um, and a lot of people actually struggled with that a little bit. I was excited and I felt confident that Lake County had the systems in place through our ecosystem. And that's what I did. I reached out to our ecosystem, let them know what our ask was and all the little, um, the, the fingers that reach out from the ecosystem were able to assist me um, to have all of the needed partners present. On the right hand side, that's an example from my EFE work of having different advisory groups come together. That was our human services. Um, advisory group where we open up our curriculum. We ask them, are we preparing our students for, for your business and, and what do you see happening within your area of work 
in the next five to seven years so that we can make sure to implement that. On our next slide, don't be afraid to bring business into the classroom. And that can look a few different ways. This is an example of something that we did at Grays Lake uh, North this year, where we invited our alumni. Um, and I think that's an untapped resource in a lot of um, schools. Uh, looking into your alumni and having that database of, of your past students um, from any standpoint, uh, in, in this particular picture, this is a female student that won a uh, engineering scholarship. Uh, she is bilingual. Um, and she has been all over publications at the College of Lake County. So she came back to talk about how what was happening in her PLTW classes um, and what she put together in her portfolio actually landed her her current internship at college. Um, so it's having those students um, see those real world connections. And this is also a great opportunity when you're bringing alumni um, from the business world into the classroom. That's a great way for your teachers to do a direct ask. Um, and getting them a little bit more familiar with that sales uh, of asking because it is someone they're familiar with. Um, typically, it is a former student they had to be able to coach up the teachers, say, you know, ask, this is someone that's a little familiar with you, to be able to let them know your needs or remind them. Do you remember when you were in our class, we really could have used you know, X, Y, or Z. So again, don't be afraid of the ask. Some more ideas of inviting um, businesses into your classroom and keep in mind, I'm a big believer that your classroom is not, is not defined by the walls in the physical school building. And there's no time other than right now that that is completely evident. Um, so think about your site visits. And I do like to call them site visits or field trips because it, it, it puts a little different spin on it. Um, so the top center one is, is our mobile apps um, from both of our schools heading to downtown to Apple and to VO Ride. So it was a collaboration of two different businesses that, that came together to give our students realistic presentations. Um, having students um, bring businesses into the classroom. Uh, the upper right-hand corner is an example of um, professionals coming in to do a taste test in our culinary classroom. Uh, upper left-hand corner are our mock interviews where we're bringing business members into um, our mock interview, having companies help prepare our students. Um, and then other ideas such as our career expos, site visits, and again, using different technologies to bring um, the collaboration into the school building. The last item that, that I'm really excited to highlight is an example of not only you um, reaching out and letting the businesses know what your needs are, but especially at a time right now, is letting the businesses know and the, the community partnerships how we can fulfill their needs. Um, right now, th there's a huge need. We hear it all the time on the news for PPE. Um, so the CTE department in um, District 127, um, our, our tech ed teachers have collaborated together to be able to produce some different prototypes. Um, those prototypes were just finished this week. And as early as today, the link went out to a variety of different um, health service partners that we have, as well as first responders. Within minutes of us sending out that link, we have um, close to 200 different orders for these different types of PPE equipment. Because we, we had that previous relationship, they, they know uh, what we're offering is valid. Thanks, Gina. It's so great to hear from and learn from other districts as we go through the process of building our relationships and maintaining them as well in regards to work-based learning. So now I'd like to share with you a little bit about what we do in St. Charles School District in regards to both building our community partnerships as well as maintaining them. So I've categorized those two topics into four different subcategories, which include identifying the needs as well as revisiting the needs for students, pathways, as well as programs, community outreach, communication, as well as site visits. And I love how Gina described those as true site visits and not using the verbiage of field trips because I do think it makes a difference because our students are being exposed to the work industry through those site visit opportunities. So the first category that I'd like to talk through a little bit is identifying and revisiting the needs in regards to what our students need in terms of work-based learning experiences. 
So it's important to look at the programs that you currently have in place, what you want to build, and what the student needs and the interests are. So three examples of this are highlighted on the screen. So our first example in the upper left-hand corner is Project Synergy. This is our high school STEM intensive program that takes students through a rigorous four-year course sequence and provides intensive summer experiences and work-based learning opportunities. So for this particular program, the major work-based learning opportunity is students complete a 150-hour internship over the course of the summer going into their junior year through the winter of their senior year. On, in the upper left-hand, or upper right-hand corner, I'm sorry, is our on-the-job training program that works with our special needs and transition students, and they work within the community to gain meaningful, hands-on work-based learning experiences. One example of this is our students run a coffee shop at our public library during the week, which has received incredibly responsive feedback, um, positive response from the community. And lastly at the bottom is our incubator programs at both the middle school and high school. So we're in our second year of the program implementation at both middle schools and high schools. And it's vital that we both build and maintain community partnerships as part of these programs. At the beginning, we did a lot of community outreach and rallying the whole community together by getting our four community champions on board, which are our mayor of the city of St. Charles, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, and the two directors of the downtown St. Charles partnership. So having those four community champions in place really helped us build our strong volunteer base. And as a result of the community involvement, we have over 80 consistent volunteers in our program from the middle schools and the high school, which we are so incredibly grateful for. And as we advance to the next slide, continuing with identifying and revisiting the needs, Something important to keep in mind is having a deep understanding from the school district side of the Every Student Succeeds Act, um, or ESSA, but as well as the post-secondary career and expectations framework, as well as the college and career pathway endorsements through the PWR Act, which Gina referenced to offering her students within the IT pathway access to that the career pathway endorsement. It's so essential that we provide our students opportunities that will lead them to completing the college and career readiness indicators prior to them graduating from high school and preparing them for their post-secondary experiences, whatever they look like. The next category is community outreach, which is essential in especially building those community partnerships as well as maintaining them. And we are extremely fortunate in St. Charles to have access to a lot of industry as well as multiple organizations. The president of the St. Charles Chamber of Commerce as well as our D303 Director of Communications plays such a vital role in reaching out to industry in order to help us secure internship placements for our students. Additionally, this year, in partnership with the City of St. Charles, we launched our first ever job shadow program where high school students have the opportunity to shadow any area of municipal government. So we launched the program this year with two shadow days, and next year we will be adding additional opportunities for students to engage in. As part of this program, students shadowed career, careers anywhere from the mayor to firefighter to arborist to electrical engineer and everything in between. Additionally, two of our other partners are Project Lead the Way and ASD. Project Lead the Way has been a partner of ours for 10 years now and we engage the community through advisory teams as well as community members serving as judges for our engineering design and development course, which is the capstone course in Project Lead the Way. Our other partner, ASC, is the organization that affords our students in our Auto Pathway program the opportunity to earn industry level credentials. And our advisory teams for both of those programs include members of the community and they meet twice a year. Next, it's really important to keep in mind communication, whatever that looks like, whether it's web-based and social media, if it's print, 
communication or whatever that looks like, it's important to consider the communication from all angles as it's been an essential part of our process in both building and maintaining our important community partnerships. And we always want to highlight the authentic and innovative work-based learning experiences our students are engaged in, as well as highlighting the community partners and volunteers as part of that process because we do highly value those community partnerships. We also communicate with our community what our needs are in terms of work-based learning host sites. So you'll see in the upper row in the middle, we do social media posts frequently throughout the year with what our needs are. So we can gain additional host sites that way. And in the upper left hand corner, what you'll see is a Twitter post from the city of St. Charles that highlights our job shadow program. So there, the students that you see on the screen, they are getting a taste of what it's like to serve on the city council as part of municipal government. And in the upper right hand corner, what you'll see is our community volunteers engaged in our incubator program through providing feedback to our students entrepreneurship teams. And then in the bottom row is a snippet from our annual report focused on our innovative learning internship program. So it shows the, the growth of our internship program throughout the last couple of years, which we're very proud of. And last but not least are our site visits. So in establishing and maintaining community partnerships, site visits are another essential component to this. So it's important to conduct site visits both before students begin their work-based learning and during the process of students being engaged in their work-based learning. So for our students, Currently accessing internships, the school-based supervisor visits our students at their internship sites at least once a semester. So this, the picture in the upper left-hand corner was taken in front of Fermilab, and we have a student this year participating in an incredibly unique internship experience where the student is getting to work with an astrophysicist as well as a particle physicist from their departments working on a cork net project. And the student said whenever we talk to the student about their experience, they say that it's the most incredible experiences that they've had throughout their, their high school career. And we're so grateful that we have access to things like Fermilab in our own backyard. And the three other pictures that you see on the slide are from our inaugural year of celebrating International Manufacturing Day, and students had the opportunity to do multiple site visits where they got to see industry live in action. So we'd like to thank you so much for listening to Gina and I talk about how we build and maintain community partnerships. Please feel free to reach out to either one of us at any time, and we would love to partner with you in your journey as you build these programs in your own district. I want to thank both of you for joining us. There was so many, so much great content in here. I mean, obviously, um, some of the real themes were building that network and then maintaining it once you built it. And the use of the term in Lake County ecosystem is, I think, a brilliant takeaway for all of us to keep in mind. Um, the concept of the ask is really, really important. It's super common as I conduct the Career Pathways Virtual Trailheads episodes of those interviews with guests from across career pathways. Um, the terms like the ask are really, really common in other fields. For those of us that are in education, that is not a very common, uh, that is not only not a very common piece of vocabulary, it's oftentimes a very uncomfortable piece of vocabulary for those of us that all started out as teachers. And yet it is critically important and we can see the benefits of it in this case and the willingness of our partners uh, beyond our school districts to join us for that. Um, the idea of having some key community champions uh, that we heard about in St. Charles is really, really another important takeaway for all of us to think about who in our community already are those maybe informal community champions, but um, kind of bringing them together maybe a little bit more formally and designating them such and having them help out. And then 
the overall importance of communication. And certainly we've seen across the state of Illinois, more and more districts have prioritized um, having someone be responsible for communication. But as we all try and put as many of our dollars towards the classroom, that's always a big challenge. So at least if we keep it in the forefront of our mind and think about how we can work that into our jobs, I think there were some really, really great examples. And, and we've seen some of the work that's been done in specific places is able to, like the, the career guide from Lake County, is able to become available um, to, to other places. And by sharing those communications resources, we can help one another out. So I want to thank you both, Gina and Melissa. This was a fantastic presentation, and uh, I hope it meets the needs of the network. We are a network, so uh, while we're not having the dialogue that we'd like to have in the room face to face now, let's take advantage of social media and email and continue that dialogue and reach out to Gina, Melissa, myself, if you have any questions about this. So Gina, Melissa, thank you both so much. Thank, Thank you, you Jason. Jason.